Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to enjoy the following two hours of live wrestling entertainment. Tonight, for your viewing pleasure, we will be starting the night with Selena Bochamp and Tiger Taylor in the ring. Later on, Queen Raiden seeks to put Christina down in a submission match. Right after that, we have Caitlyn O'Neill seeking to make Alexia Dregadotir submit to her superior power. And the main event of tonight will decide who will get the Evolution match on the New Year's Day. Will it be Furious Ford or Abla Casey? Coming to you live from Helsinki, Finland, I am your host Kupari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the tonight's episode of the Pro Masters, the last show of the December as well as 2022. It's been one heck of a year for the brawlers, and no doubt about it, it's gonna get even more exciting next year. But before getting to the New Year's TLC event coming to you this Sunday, day one of Brawl Masters is gonna be Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, uh, a premium show. Before getting to that, we need to get through the matches of tonight, and there's a lot of promise being shown to us tonight. Starting us off, we will have Selena Bochamp and Tiger Taylor going up against one another yet again. This time in a normal match, though. The second fight tonight will be a two-on-two -two elimination brawl between the Faces of Fear and uh, the Hero Alliance. The third match will be our eight-man four-way ladder tag team match featuring eight of the junior fighting competitors in the men's division. Following them up, we have a fatal four-way brawl between the four of the women junior fighters. Kaya, next, we have a six-man elimination match between the six all-star brawlers. They want to come out on top of this will be the most likely member to be given the next opportunity to get the All-Star Grand Prix Championship fight. The sixth match will be a match between Big Ham and Partacus. Following them up, we have Win Raiden and Christina Van Mortis. Coming up to the eighth match of the night, it's Caitlin O'Neill versus Alexia Dregadotir. And the main event of tonight will be a one-on-one -on -one brawl between Furious Ford and Alpha Casey. Without further ado, let's get right to the show. To start us off, we have Selena Bochamp versus Tiger Taylor. Beautiful, the astonishing, the one of the most adorable brawlers we have on the roster, Selena Bochamp. You get a better watch out because she's about to pounce. It really is a quite a po poetic fight. After all, we have a, a, a cat lady versus a tiger lady, which one of the ferocious felines is gonna be claiming to the top spot tonight. We just have to wait and find out, but looking at Selena, she's definitely aiming to set the competition high. Tiger Taylor, season one veteran brawler, the mo one of the most powerful women in the entire roster, and the one to be the number one favorite to claim the top spot in the series. At least that's what she's always been striving for. 
she has had her feel of good fights. But now with this bout with Selena, she is experiencing an entire new type of competitor. One who does not go for the glory, but for the adoration of the fans. No matter what the price is. Question is, will Tiger Taylor be able to play fair with her? Or does she succumb to the desire to prove herself? Whatever it may be, no doubt about it, it will be a great show for us, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, starting the first fight of tonight. We have Selena Bochamp versus Tiger Taylor, and Selena already starting heavy. Look at this beautiful neck breaker there, using Tiger Taylor's own hand to crank up the neck, and already going for a submission position. The head scissors are locked in, and Tiger Taylor able to force her off real quick. Like, I, I'm not sure what, what the plan there was with Selena. Was he tying her out? And we've already seen that Tiger Taylor cannot be dropped down with such speed. Tiger Taylor turning things around against Selena, going for punches against the face after a military press drop. Now stomps on the face, Selena able to get out of the way there, goes for the running clothesline, dropping Tiger Taylor down, setting up the arm, goes for the jumping stomp. Selena on the apron now, on the top rope, here she comes. With a blackout Meteora already, a Meteora has struck, and here comes the top rope Moonsault. Going for the cover, now the first cover, one, two, no, barely beats the two count. Tiger Taylor beating the two count, even though getting struck with the Meteora this early on on the match. Selena definitely going full throttle from the start. Going for a few strikes, gets countered by Tiger Taylor now. Sets up with a spine buster. Goes on the legs and a few stomps. Selena catching the leg there. Goes for the dragon screw, turning things around yet again. From the top rope, a springboard moonsault. Selena Bochamp just flying through the air without caring the world. Tiger Taylor countering. Goes for both sided slaps. Lifting Selena back up and looks like she's setting up with the tiger suplex. Selena is down, shoulders are down, and hooks up the leg. Here we go, gentlemen. Fun. Two count, three, no, kicks out. Selena Bochamp kicking out. After a two count, Tiger Taylor, though, looking to finish this up in a devastating maneuver. Lifted up. Looks like we have an incoming Alabama slam. Just slightly off the target. Could have hit the. Could have hit the turnbuckles there, instead going for a cross face, submission hold, applied, good positioning with Tiger Taylor, but unfortunately, Selena Bochamp not about to give the match just yet. Going for a look at this, sets up with an inverted cross, hooks up the leg into a small package, here we go, two count, and three, no, kicks out, Selena Bochamp still kicking out with force and a bit of a restful position there, looked like her spine broke there. Setting up with another, no, not a tiger suplex. I have no idea what that move was called, but it definitely did a number on Selena. Tiger Taylor on the top rope now. Selena getting back up to her fear, here, what's out, she did what's out. Countering Tiger Taylor mid-air with a punch. From behind, catches hold of her, locks up the head. And look like we're gonna be seeing a jumping bulldog. Goes for a solid kick to the back there. And another one, really, really punishing the back there. Selena now climbing to the top. Top rope, no, she realizes straight too far off the course here. She cannot reach Tiger Taylor from this position. Look at this, misses entirely. Tiger Taylor taking the opportunity, set up with the surfboard, locked into a face crusher. Selena getting back up to her feet, and look out this, a blackout Meteora, locks up the legs. 
that goes for the cover three Selena Bochamp evening out the score between these two it's two to two right now two victories for Tiger Taylor two victories for Selena Bochamp score receiving but what's gonna happen here Selena offering hat shaking respect Tiger Taylor there she goes now this is what brawling is all about, good sportsmanship. Great to see that Tiger Taylor is still able to lose in Kraza's fashion. Next up we have the Faces of Fear against the Hero Alliance. Bartani Racer, the Diabolical Duo, back at it again. Their previous plan of setting up the Hero Alliance has turned soil, and now they're choosing a more direct course of action, going after the duo themselves. the hero alliance back to get her and better than ever i heard from flyboy that he spent the entire last night dying his uh, underpants for just for this match for the return match once again unified in their solitary purpose of protecting the civilians protecting the free people from the bad guys the super villains and whatnot and just from the regular villains as well making the street safer and making the series safer for everyone else. Truly the most iconic and heroic duo we've ever seen. I'm just relieved that they do didn't end up breaking up after their little trauma episode. But looks like they're still in good moods. And here we go, we're starting off the second match and the first ever brawl type match. Now, ladies and gentlemen, bra brawl matches are a new set of special rules that take place in the Brawl Master series. Now, uh, the, there are no pinfalls in this match. They are uh, the only way to eliminate your opponent is by either a submission or by a knockout. When a referee spots a brawler has been knocked out, uh, he will call off uh, that brawler and they will get eliminated. Also, in most match cases, there is a limit to only five seconds of ring time, or, or rather a five, five count of ring out until a disqualification. Or in the most, uh, in case of there being multiple people, we're talking about more than four, four or more. In, in those matches, exiting the ring is not allowed. Flyboy has made the tag and tagging in Tornado Torres. Going for an elbow jab, another one, Dr. Edwards countering, lifting him up and goes for the backbreaker. Yes, uh, Eraser's master plan of breaking up the Hero Alliance from within turned out, turned out foul and did not uh, end up in the promised 
well, not necessarily pr promised, but hope to resolve. So Flyboy and Tornado Torres of breaking up and finding their own way. Instead, the duo is now better than ever and more, more set, setting their sights even more so of making sure that their faces of fear do not get their way. But so far, Dr. Edwards has been getting his way with Tornado Torres. Let's see if Eraser is able to keep up with the momentum. Getting from behind, catches the head. Sets up with the cross face and goes for the submission hold. There he is. Locks up with the arm of Tornado Torres, trying to get a submission elimination here. No, Tornado Torres using his arm and elbow to force the separation. Goes for another elbow strike there. Crowd did not like that for some reason. Maybe, maybe th these weeks of going after Flyboy have really turned the crowd against him. Hard to tell here, but going for a stop. But looks like we're going to be seeing a colossal clutch. There it is. Using strength, but Eraser using his own strength. Picking up the ha arms and tracks. Tracks Tornado Torres down. Lifting it up into a fireman's carry now being carried around and set up with the snake eyes. Face first into the top turnbuckle. That's gonna be hurting. Not done yet. Sets up with the sit out alley oop power bomb. And now going for another looks like colossal no not a col colossal class, a cross face. There it is. Dr. Edwards stepping inside the ring. Here's Flyboy coming in behind and from behind him, Dr. Edwards drops the hero, second member of the Hero Alliance down. We're getting a two count for Dr. Edwards. He's going to join in on the fight against Tornado Torres. Now he's getting out. Eraser with a jawbreaker. Lift and Tornado Torres back up and looks like setting up with a choke slam. There it is. No counter. Tornado Torres counter just at the nick of time with a DDT. A beautiful, beautiful way to turn things around. Flyboy inside the ring. and security dropping him down and Dr. Edward stacked in as well. We're back to the starting pair. Let's see if Flyboy will have a better, better fight against uh, Edwards this time. Sets up with the drop kick. Dr. Edwards sent outside. Getting back up and here comes Flyboy with a corkscrew placha. Beautiful, but that a very risky maneuver there. Jumping to the outside never produces good results. It may be worth the risk as long as you're able to hit your opponent, but uh, in most cases you'll end up more hurt than you'll ga you're gaining. Flyboy with a solid kick to the gut there. We have a two count now. Remember, it's only a count to five before you get eliminated, so... Dr. Edwards better hurry up here. Edwards getting back up to his feet. Circling around, we have a four count rushing, coming, rushing back inside the ring. Dr. Edwards lifting Flyboy up into a backbreaker. Getting him down and turning him around, looks like this. Here comes... There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the monster Plex. Dr. Edwards just deadlifting our opponent. And here we go with the sleeper hold as well. Sets up. Oh, look at this. Uh, Flyboy has been knocked out of this competition. Dr. Edwards putting Flyboy to sleep. Tornado Torres with the double underhook into a backbreaker. Tornado Torres now has to face off against both members of their faces of fear. If he's hoping to win this one. Eraser tag team misses with the elbow, hits with the upper, gets countered by Tornado Torres, misses the kick. Eraser now back at it, goes for the back suplex. Lifting his opponent back up to his feet. Set up with a pop up and drop down. Not done yet, it seems Eraser picking him up one more time, catches hold of him. This allowing though Tornado Torres to turn things around, forces the separations with the elbows into a wheelbarrow, into an arm track. Eraser down, top misses. Eraser striking in now. Here he comes, digging in the claw, setting Tornado Torres up. And here comes the low angle crossbody. Tornado Torres knocked out by that. Meaning the faces of fear get two to nothing victory. Some of the replays here, there, here's the monster Plex really dropping the weight down. Here's the final finishing move by Eraser. 
stunning tornado Torres no no way of escaping those nails and then it all comes to the cross body The faces of fear definitely proving themselves. Even though the Hero Alliance has unified against them, they are still no mass for them. The faces of fear are in a completely different league, thanks to the infighting between the previous four mentioned two. Coming up next, we have a ladder four-way tag team match between the junior fighting men. Times do I have to tell you it's not Gabriel? He's not gay. He's Gabriel, and he's one of the most astonishing brawlers here in the series. Then again, he's just a brawler who cares more, more about his looks than actual his uh, track record here. It's been just most uh, stylish in the background, but tonight he wanted to take part in this fight. So who was I to prevent him from doing so? But let's be honest, it's uh, not about him taking, taking part in the fight, but more so just showcasing how stunningly handsome and beautiful he is. Krom, one of the more devastating brawlers we have in the junior fighting division right now. His spine buster have slept many a brawlers in a hurting condition for weeks. But not necessarily weeks, we don't actually have any... Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just so uh, telling that no, anyone who faces off against Krom will be taking a good long vacation. A few days to rest up back from the spine busters he's delivering. Not weeks, just days. I'm not mouthing off. Shut up. self-proclaimed Dark Lord, Master of the Shadows, number one conniving and scheming character, who, who happens to love the color Aquamarine. That's why his clothes are uh, colored like that. No one really knows what his deal is, what is he planning, or why is he doing the things he's doing. But you can never trust him. He always has his own agenda on the line. Season 2 prominent character, one of the most powerful ones in the Season 2, was now being taken part of the Junior Fighting Division. 
gonna be a real, real good show, no doubt about it. Carly are already knowing how things go around in the Pro Masters and his previous expertise uh, throughout the fights in the Season 2 will definitely give him an edge in uh, this fight. We'll just have to see whether his fighting experience is enough to carry him over or if the new bloods have some unheard tactics that will completely stump his game. The almighty Turkish titan, we have known and come to love as Yusuf Ahmed. The most, the tallest, the heaviest brawler in the entire series. Just a few pounds shy of 500. This mass of a man is not to be trifled with. I gotta say, any, uh, he already looks plenty, plenty pumped up. But as much as this man shows any sort of emotion other than anger. He's here to dominate, not to play games. But as it goes with the Brawlmasters, size doesn't mean anything or everything. You have to come uh, come up with tactics and rely on his teammates for to win this fight. The master of the faster, well not really a faster, the master of the dragon slaying, cooker of salmon, and the lighter of fires, it's Kazarian. I could be slaying anything but still holding on to that precious slayer helmet of his. I can't blame him, it's a very good piece of equipment for any kind of situation. Green Cyclone, probably the face of the junior fighting division as of now. He has had a very successful career here in the Pro Masters. Mostly thanks to his training with Master Sal, if you can call that training. He still aspires to get, get to even higher levels than before. And I don't know about a win tonight will do just that. Junior Fighting Champion, 
Scorpion Scotty. It's Scorpion Scotty, the man who was able to defeat Season 1 veteran Punk Hercules for the junior fighting belt. He's gonna be taking part in this fight. I know that about it, it will give him and Green Cyclone an immense boost. After all, who here dares to challenge the champion? Then again, this could be the downfall of his career because a humiliating defeat right here could showcase to the entire roster that the champion is just a flop and his belt is up for grabs. Sam definitely will have to put his A game on tonight. If not an S game. Really dark looking here. With a lot of light, but I suppose for a man like Scorpio Scotty, the future is not very bright. As of net yet at least. And the ring is full of people as we have a four team, four teams of two fighting out for the object hanging up of the ring. A briefcase just waiting for the person to come and grab it with the help of a ladder. It looks like Green Cyclone, the first one to come pick a ladder. Here we have Scorpio Scotty with eight defeat against Gabriel. I'm sorry, Gabriel. It just comes so easily, you know. You just, for some reason, you associate G Gabriel with that man. Even though his name is Gabriel. Full on chaos right now going on the ringside mostly. We have Kazarian going uh, going in a, uh, uh, a cross face against Satoru. Satoru picking it off. Sets up a suplex against the ladder. That's nasty. That's going to be hurting the back. Lift it up. Looks like an, a back suplex now. In the ring we have... No, we are going back to Satoru. And Kazarian with the face punches. In the ring, however, again Satoru just stealing the spotlight from everyone else. Well, now on the ring we have from the Cybernetic Knight versus Green Cyclone. Cyclone dropped down with a kick. Yusuf set into the, against the barricade by Carl the Earl. And Scorpion Scotty is still keeping up with Gabriel. Looks like Satoru tried to set up a ladder between the ring and the announcement table. Here we go. A beautiful moonsault unfortunately misses entirely as Kazarian is able to roll out of the way. Sent against the ring post now. Here we have From setting up with a sin breaker into a exploder suplex. Gabriel getting the upper hand against Scorpion Scotty, the junior fighting champion. Sets up with the arm ringer twists it down and stomps right on it. Kazaria with a side leg sweep there against Satoru. And Chrome, the cybernetic knight, has the ladder to himself. He's tossing it inside the ring. Here it comes. No, it gets launched outside. I don't know what kind of repulsion lift powers were used, but for some reason the ladder gets launched back outside, where it's no use to anyone. Satoru with a stomp on the underleg against Kazarian. Kazarian dropping down straight onto the ladder. That's gonna be hurting. Yeah, Kazarian is getting the bad end of the ladder treatment tonight. Three and Cyclone getting interrupted by Chrom. Kazarian and Chrom double teaming against Green Cyclone. Or looks like they're more, more like fighting to see who can get him. Chrom now being sending Kazarian into the steel ladder spot. Uh, that Satoru had prepared. Yusuf rolling out. We have two sets of ladders inside the ring. Now it's a matter of time of anyone just setting them up and, and getting the briefcase. A back suplex. No, just a regular old suplex. By Carl they are getting countered by Chrome. No, gets a knee lift straight to the torso there. Getting punched. From setting up with a neck breaker. No, Satoru with the ladder again, clearing out space and setting up the ladder in the middle of the ring. Satoru looks like 
make it the first one for the reaching for the briefcase but here's Gabriel from behind striking me a few times and collapses the ladder right from underneath sets up with the electric chair drop Satoru is down and looks like he's out no he's getting back up huh well so be it full-on chaos in the ring I, I do not even remember what the teams were these are just random pairings that need to figure out a way to work to get her to get the briefcase for the team here we have Kazarian in the ring, Yusuf ring in the ring and Green Cyclone, Green Cyclone getting attacked set up with the Northern Light Suplex getting back up and going after Yusuf Ahmed, the tallest man, the biggest man in the series dropped down with a wheelbarrow DDT here we have Gabriel setting up stealing, really stealing, not stealing but setting up with the cross face trying to get, I don't know who's going for the briefcase but they better hurry up and work, it, work their way around there we go, it's Kasarian working his way around the briefcase Scorpion Scotty just standing there, there he goes punting Kasarian after a bit of a setup, the ladder collapses all of a sudden dropping both him and Kasarian down Satoru with Gabriel Gabriel escaping, going for the leg and Meanwhile, Green Cyclone proving himself a more than adequate opponent against Yusuf Ahmed. That's gonna be humiliating. He's such a small man. Just toying with you at this point. Gabriel setting up. And here we have Satoru punching Kasarian straight into the Slayer helmet. And a, ooh, a beautiful double underhook into a spin out, sit out powerbomb. Looks like a tour of the isles, the tool of the islands, or the isles, however you want to pronounce that. Yusuf setting the ladder up in the middle of the ring, and here he comes, climbing up really slowly. Looks like the attacks by Green Cyclone really did a number on him, but not enough to drop him down. But he's got the focus of half of the roster on him, but he's making good wear with the hooks there. He got it. Yusuf Ahmed got it uncontested really Yusuf Ahmed and his partner are the winners of this tag team match in, in, uh, I cannot believe that this is how it ends everyone just staring at him Here are your winners. yes Yusuf Ahmed and Gasari and the winner well, that was evidently a show, showcase of, I don't know, re not really team spirit, but I suppose uh, overcoming hardships, considering how much damage both Kalsarian and Yusuf Ahmed took in that match. Next up, we have a Fatal 4-Way Elimination Brawl between Berthe Valkyrie, Victoria Sokolova, Tiffany Henderson and Sandra Parker. see a good amount of uh, brawlers who have uh, come from entertainment dancing to the side of fight in the entertainment and Victoria Sokolova is just the newest addition to this roster a former ballet dancer definitely has the balance needed to be executing high flying maneuvers to take their enemies off guard not to mention the stunning beauty Tiffany 
Danny Henderson, definitely uh, the self-driving competitor here. Over, going out for to boosting her own image, her own ego, and her own business here. After all, what's more appealing to a business investor than a strong, independent woman? Korean warrior bird a very devastating and very ruthless competitor having chosen having been chosen by four himself to join him in the afterlife but now sent back to this realm to fight more glorious matches The other competitors definitely better watch out. A shield maiden is not to be trifled with. Mean girl with the attitude, Sandra Parker, a police brawler looking to set her the career high and proving herself to be the number one contender here. So far, her career hasn't been that impressive, but maybe she'll be up doing a 180 tonight. A victory against three of her junior fighters would definitely help in getting ahead in the series. Just like with the Elimination Brawl tag, the rules for the Elimination Brawl are pretty much the same. You are eliminated out of this competition if you submit to your opponent or if you are knocked out of the competition. Also, because this is the uh, Fatal 4-way match, exiting the ring is not allowed. Every, every action has to take place inside the ring within the confines of the ropes. Get, getting thrown outside or stepping outside of the ring will be counted as a disqualification. Yeah. Well, let's see, we're starting with the opening maneuvers here. It looks like Tiffany Henderson being in a colossal clutch. No, she's able to pick it off. Sandra Parker being dust down. And on the four, we have Bert the Valkyrie going up against Victoria Sokolova, the Ukrainian ballerina. It looks like a single leg camel clutch. No, she's able to get out of that one fairly easily. Looks like she's gonna go for a Northern Light suplex. Dropping the Valkyrie down and looks like Tiffany is a with a submission hold against Sandra. And now Victoria going for a colossal clutch. No, that's a rope break. Bird's feet right underneath that rope ensuring that the submission hold must be broken off. But it's, I don't know what was that, they're just dodging each other around. Tiffany setting Sandra up in the corner, pulling on the arm now. Stretching on it really uh, across the top rope. Still keeping her control. No, Sandra able to get out of the corner there. Lifts up into a German suplex. And there we go, the camel clutch. Victoria Sokolova with the camel clutch. No, Bird breaks it off and gets away with it. Able to escape and 
Now tosses Victoria into the corner. Here comes Sandra to take the opportunity on that. Sets up the leg and kicks it right to the side. That's going to be hurting. A bit of wobbling around. Sandra giving another opportunity. Knee lifts straight to the torso. Meanwhile on the other end we have Tiffany Henderson now setting up. Looks like a bank backstabber not done yet. Sets up with a submission of the bank statement. The bank statement definitely showing up there for Bert the Valkyrie. Unfortunately not something that Tiffany is able to cash on on. A single leg, a single arm hook up into a face breaker. Sandra now setting up with looks like a Boston Crab. There it is. He has a full control Boston Crab has been applied and for some reason the referee is looking at the legs and instead not asking Victoria whether or not she's doing all right in there she's able to withstand the torment so far she's not giving up just yet setting up with the hip drop Sandra in a good con uh, position right now against Victoria but that might be turned around speaking of turning around neck breaker no bird with quick thinking a kick straight to the between the legs Dropping Tiffany down and now with the oh, using the boot to scrape on the face. Here we have Victoria with the split leg leg drop. A signature move there. But uh, uh, Gaffy has been well known for that. And a knee strike finishing off Sandra Parker. Unfortunately for her, she's gonna continue being the very bottom of the rankings at the very bottom of the rankings this is uh, this, this has not been a good career so far or a successful brawling career for Sandra Living alone, being left alone with only three brawlers inside the ring bird on the top rope she's gesturing at Tiffany she could very well end it the divine hammer strike misses force hammer misses as Victoria tosses Tiffany out of the way and now drops Bird down. Gets the hold of the leg into a head into a head lock. Try to get her to the corner, but she's able to break her off here. Tiffany again tosses Bird against the corner. There's a hurricane run, a beautiful execution there. Tiffany picking a fight against Bird. Bird knocking her out with just one punch. Just one punch knocking. Victoria out of this competition leaving only Tiffany Henderson and Bert the Valkyrie inside the White Rage and the White Rage they're gonna be eating up here comes Tiffany with a colossal clutch Te tearing into the face with those fingers and trying to get a submission here no she's launched off Bert able to force Tiffany off her person lifting her up goes for the chops she gets countered Kick to the torso, a few more strikes and a clothesline dropping her down. Tiffany now looking to finish things off. Here she comes with the elbow, misses. As Bird is able to get out of the way. DDT targeting the head there. Rolling out of the way, an elbow strike to the face. Just pounding off from there. Goes for clothesline, no. Turn things around one more time. Not for light suplex by Bird Tom, stop on the head there and looks like we're gonna see yet another submission hold the referee breaking it off to the rope break can't believe that, that was so close to the ropes but apparently it was Tiffany forcing the separation there she gotta think of a way out of this or she's gonna be left uh, behind Getting oh I I know on the uh, scraping on the face there goes for another low blow by Bird but still you have to do what you do to get out of a hold Bird once again on the top she's looking to end this this time she better make sure that she hits she completely misses before Hammer gets locked with the race lock takedown from behind. Misses with the big boot, misses with the kick. Now Tiffany with the hair pull, mat slam. Not done yet, but neither is Bird. She's gonna go for one more time. She's trying to do this. Is she able to get it connected? Here she comes. There it is. 
the force hammer has struck. And with that, Bert the Valkyrie is claimed victorious. It's a no small feat to outlast three other brawlers, especially when it comes to knocking down them and knocking them out. We're definitely proving herself here tonight. Next up, we have a six man elimination match. Between the All-Star Brawlers, Shaking Young, Motorman, PewDiePie Cook, Jackie Jackson, Marshall David, and Henry Louis Marceau. He's too good, he's too bad, but overall he's way too adorable. It's cutie by Cook, one of the greatest all-star brawlers we have had, and one of the greatest champions back from season 2. The pure wrestling division definitely was uh, made, and definitely made a uh, lasting impact in the series, Thank mostly thanks to cutie by Cook's championship. The number one giant from the first season of the Brawl Masters. It's Jackie Jackson, the man who aimed to the top with his very peculiar style and who has managed to mostly stay at the top. He was the favorite to become the first ever champion but fell short to Blue Brute, but nonetheless, he's still part of the All Star Division. Motorman also yet another classic character, a uh, season one veteran brawler who has just recently been making a really great impact on the Brawl Masters Ria, the rising star of the third season, the previous uh, Grand Prix Master, Grand Prix Champion, and one of the top brawlers currently in the rankings overall. Let's see if he's able to attain the top position tonight. Number one order keeper of the series and the ma true master of the sleeper hold technique. None can compare to him, none can shake him up. He always has the cool demeanor needed and the necessary strategic genius to take care of any situation, no matter how dire. I gotta feel sorry for anyone who happens to get in front of his cross lines tonight. Rep 
representing Rhythm and Blues from Seoul, South Korea, weighing in at 156 pounds, Jay King Young. It's the Korean sensation, Jay King Young, the newest addition to the All Star series. Having made his way and having taken a spot from Big Ham previously, Jake definitely pro having, has proved himself to be time and time again the number one person to watch out for. In his tryouts, he definitely was one of the most ruthless brawlers. But ever since uh, having been rounded up part of part of the show, he has taken it a bit easier, a bit more carefully, a bit more considerate. To his fellow brawlers, and that, that's the kind of attitude that I gotta respect just full on. That being said, it ter absolutely terrifies me on the day that Jekyll actually unleashes his most inner demons to the ring. Who knows how many injuries can be had with him inside. Henry has been uh, definitely one of the greatest brawlers from back from season two. I made it all the way to the top, and he was at one time the Grand Prix champion, having defeated legends such as Mark Hunter and Blue Fruit to get the title for himself. Uh, getting the title, but defending it successfully time and time again against unconceivable odds. It's all about making make a great impact in the show, and tonight he's just aiming to do that. Prepare to get astonished yet again. ring full of people this is uh, what brawl masters is all about just full-on action all the way around a six-man elimination match with only one person leave uh, staying inside the ring at, by the end of it let's see what's gonna happen and who's gonna get eliminated first and what the, what the overall situation is gonna be how this will rank we might be able to see some temporary alliances maybe some scheming around from the brawlers or just everyone will be focusing on that, their own game. Jackie Young starting off against Jackie Jackson. Jackie countering there. Tossing, taking into the corner there. A show and looks like winding up a close line. Meanwhile, on the other end, we have Motorman going up against Judy by Cook and Marshall David now laying the law down on Henry Louis Marceau. Pewdiepie said against the ropes, Motorman misses with the kick. Looks like taking with the first cover of the fight. Jackie able to get up there, but... What is Jakey? He's just jammering there. I thought he was preparing. Here's Motorman preparing for a suplex. Goes for the cover now. Pewdiepie kicking out with force. Jackie with the gut buster and Marshall David with a forearm smash. Motorman keeping Pewdiepie down with Kicks and stomps, lifting him back up to his feet. Cutie by counters goes for the DDT. Jackie Young catching Jackie from behind, goes for the backstabber. Both knees just driven straight to the back there. Catching hold of the back there and goes for more. More punishing, goes for the kick. Kick right to the back there, tenderizing it. I don't know what that camera angle was. For some reason, Henry was just. Lifting in Sam's up like he doesn't care, and there it is, the sleeper hold out of nowhere. Cutie by coming in to break it up, I don't know what that was. Is he trying to keep Henry in this game for as long as possible, or is he just trying to make sure that Marshall David is eliminated sooner rather than later? Jackie Jackson for the cover against Jaking, Jaking kicking out, Cutie by 
not being attacked by Motorman as well. Motorman eating defeat. Eat defeat by Cutie by Cook. Meanwhile, Henry is setting up Marshall David in a tree of woe position, going for a food, food choke, dropping him down. Cutie by now get, trying to get. And here we have Jackie Jackson with a torture rack position. Torture rack to prison hold against Jakey. He's fighting it off. I, I, I didn't even catch that. It, it happened out of, completely out of nowhere. Here we have. Look at this. Electric chair. Draw, small package driver. Beautify being pinned by Mark Motorman. Only a two count, but looks like Motorman is not done yet. He's going to go for a big move here. Gets the kick caught. Beautify with the backbreaker goes for the neck breaker. A beautiful combination. Attack. A German suplex by Marshall David. And looks like taking with the south of heaven against Jackie Jackson. The track queen. The queen is down. Two count and three. No, shoulder is up. Marshall David against Henry. Two count. Cutie Pie against Motorman. Two count and three. Motorman, the first one to get eliminated. That was a real barrage of pinfall attempts right there. Motorman, the first one to get dropped out of this competition. Marshall David escaping Henry. Henry goes for the sit out match slam. Cutie Pie, meanwhile, with the heel hook against taking Young. Punish the leg. Jackie Jackson up. Back up and looks like Cutie Pie wants a piece. It's effectively now two versus one. Jackie having to face off against both of the queens. Henry is still keeping his attacks against Marshall David. There he is, the leg sweep. Going for the leg drop. Hooks up and goes for the cover. Taking also going against the Jackie Jackson. No, kicks out. Bit, took a bit too long for the referee to get in place there. Henry looking to finish Marshall David off, though he's not done yet. Leg sweep misses. Beautiful. Did you just see that? Beautify with the head scissors take down. Head scissors DDT. Jackie is still keeping on with this fight. Taking on the other end. Looks like he's gonna pin. Marshall David, the referee, not dropping down and doing his job. Two count, three. Marshall David, the second person to get eliminated. Leaving only four people. Both of the queens are still in this fight. Looks like a queen suplex by Jackie Jackson. He has no escapes. Judy by Cook escaping the queen suplex hold. Lifted up and looks like he's gonna go for the torture rack now. Look at this, just straight across his entire body over rope break, forcing, forcing it off. Forcing the separation, taking now, going against Henry, the previous teammates in the Rhythm and Blues team. It's real, real, real interesting to see the former teammates and the current teammates fighting one another respectively. Taking sets up for another South of Heaven. Hooks up the leg, goes for the cover. And this could be the end of Henry. No, Henry kicks out. I cannot believe it. Jakey cannot believe it. Can anyone believe it? Here we have leg twist. Dragon screw, I believe. And here we, with Jackie, we have a backbreaker. Not done yet. Still carrying around. Second backbreaker. And Henry with the French kiss just now. Kissing the Korean idol. Goes for the cover. No, doesn't he? Let's him go. What is he planning? Going for striking against the face. Another kick there. A chop right across the chest there. Jakey setting up. Goes for the knee lifts to the torso. Trying to build up some momentum here for some kind of a big maneuver. Looks like Jackie Jackson lifting, keeping the wrist lock against Cutie Pie, lifting him up with. His colossal strength wrenches the wrist yet again and again just tortures position on the arm. There are no way for uh, Cutie Pie to fight back against it. Jackie lifting Cutie Pie back up to his feet there. Up, uh, up into a carry and a pendulum backbreaker stretch. Another shove of heaven there by Jaking Young. He's still not done. He still wants to keep on going. He's setting up for another one. 
Henry fighting it off this time. Henry now getting tossed into the corner and PewDiePie locked in the submission, the torture rack position. He taps out. PewDiePie Cook, the third person to get eliminated out of this competition. Let's see, going for cover now. Taking, still kicking out of this. Only Henry, we, the Queen Jackie Jackson, as well as Jaking Young. Jaking going for the cover against Jackie. Three, no, shoulder is up. And what a powerful kick out that was. It looks like Henry meeting his cruel end south of heaven. The south of heaven one more time. And free Henry Louis Marceau. The fourth person they eliminated, meaning only Jackie and Jakey, uh, Jaking, yeah, Jaking, Jaking and Jackie, Jaking and Jackie and Jaking. Jackie Jackson set up in the corner, Jaking using his boot to choke. Really beautiful stretch there. A very, very limber competitor this Korean idol is. Going for kicks against the gut there and. A sliding elbow tackle. Lifting the Titan back up to his feet. Counters with a knee lift to the gut. Another counter catching the leg there. Jackie trying to get the momentum back on his, his side. But Jakey proving to be a bit too fast a competitor for Jackie right now. Has been slowed down. Let's see if he can bring this to an end. Trying to lift up with a belly to belly. Jackie fighting him off. Shoulder tackle or a elbow smash. Running elbow tackle. Catching hold. That looks like we're gonna see another. No, this could be a power slam. There it is. Yet it is a power slam. Devastating force. And Jackie looking to end this. He's gonna go for. No, does it go for the submiss. Uh, pinfall. He goes for the submission. Another torture rack. Another rope break as well. Jackie must have kicked the rope even though I didn't see that. Going for the cover now though, two count and three. Taking is out, meaning Jackie Jackson, the queen reigns dominant. What a, what a fight, what a, what a outcome. So full of action. These all-star brawlers definitely giving their all. One after another, big moves, left and right. It's all about dominance but at the end of the day and Jackie Jackson definitely knows how to dominate in the ring. Next up, it will be the fight between the classic characters, Big Hammond and Bartakus. Nelson, the poster child of the Brawl Masters and one of the absolute chads. So uh, like, look at the size of this man. Many brawlers have a hard time fi fighting against him as he's so dominating. Taking full advantage of his size and weaponizing his body in unbelievable manner. is a 
opponent representing power and glory from Mount Olympus, weighing in at 193 pounds, spectacular, the Olympian Strongman, the legendary Creek warrior Partacus, the son, the rightful heir to the legacy of the gods, and the gatekeeper to the Olympian legends. Only he knows the truth about the Olympian gods. And knowing that truth has allowed him to gain such immense power for himself. Here we go, the bell has rung and we start off. This fight between Partacus and Big Cam. The sixth fight of the night. Partacus immediately dropped down to the top turnbuckle with the snake house, catching all of the throat there. No, Partacus counters with an arm track, dropping Big Cam down, now mounting him and going for forearm smashes. Or incoming, not really weaponizing that forearm there. Easy, easy clapping duel. Partacus lifting Big Camp up to his feet now, going for a chokehold himself. What is their plan there? A punch straight on their corner and shoulder thrust against the turnbuckles. The way out of this one as he sets up for the alley oop. Wait a minute, what's going on? That's Mr. Ace's theme music, but where is Mr. Ace? And what is he doing here anyway? Wait, what? He's behind you, Partacus, look out! What's up, what's up, what's up? Partacus... Oh, Partacus able to get hold of Ace and tosses him aside. See, it looks like the fight has broken up between him and Ace. A back suplex, he's not done yet. He's Ace rushing out and Partacus about to follow him, looks like. Ace making his graceful escape out of the ring there. And... Well, that definitely gave Big Cam enough time to recover, but what was, what was that about? Why, 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 did, why did Ace come out here? He has no stakes in this fight. Well, he was either here to support Big Cam or to make an enemy out of Particle, setting him up in, into his target list, but surely he would have, would have done something more dramatic or something more efficient if the... Uh, so uh, if the uh, uh, goal here was to cause some kind, some sort of a disruption, Partacus going for the cover against Big Ham now hooks up the leg, two count, three no, only a three two count, just a bit shy of three, a real close there for Big Ham. He's definitely not his usual self. They're sent outside of the ring. Remember, this is a brawl match, so. There's only a five count limit. Getting kicked and stomped now. Big Ham trying to turn things around against Spartacus who's now tossing him around into the barricade. Going for stomps. Lifted back up there. Going for strikes. No, it looks like we have a... It's a, not a brawl but instead a regular fight. My mistake. Yeah, this is a normal, normal fight. Lift it up and ooh, back of the head meeting the barricade. Yeah, Big Ham definitely has a kept up with the training regimen he promised himself and the entire Brawl Masters universe he would be going around. Looks like, is Big Ham going to be giving up? Yeah, he's just wandering around. Partagus coming in to toss Big Ham back inside the ring. It doesn't look like he, he even wants to fight anymore. If you don't want to fight, then just give up. Uh, that's that's a that's a proficient end to this matter. Particles countered. Big Ham setting up. He's finally found the fire to fight back. Goes for a suplex. Still, but at this juncture, Particles already has such a huge lead. He already uh, he just needs to seal the deal, and the fight is all over. So called, and into a powerful lung blower punch. They'll push out, uh, push out all the air out of you. Big Ham sent into the corner now. 
Partagus misses as Bigham is able to evade him. Goes for behind him. I don't know how he did that into a exploder suplex from behind. Catching hold of the arm there and now stomping on the hand. Partagus being softened up here a bit now with choking against the canvas. Lifted back up to his feet. Big Ham catching hold, lifted up into a fireman's carry. And here comes the snake eyes. Partagus stunned at the bottom turnbuckle. Big Ham coming in to stomp a few times. That's just it, lifted up back to his feet and sent again into the corner. Partagus fighting Big Ham off, sets up, goes for the knee lift. Another sort of one dropping Big Ham down. Lifted back up and looks like we're gonna see. Um, look at this, a squatting, doing squats with a shoulder carry into a power slam. Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. Three, no, shoulder is up. You could really see uh, Big Ham struggling to get that shoulder up. He's completely out of it, he's uh, out of energy. Is he able to keep up? Particle's trying to lock up the arm behind the head there. A foolish mistake. No one has ever succeeded in completing that maneuver and I don't believe Partagus will be the first one. A kick to recovery there, Partagus turning things around once again mounting Big Ham and going for forearm smashes again. More to the elbow, uh, I mean to the shoulder. Lifting Big Ham up, Big Ham counters with an elbow to the Guts there, lifted up, no, Bartagus escapes, comes from behind, another strike with the elbow to the back, really now causing perpetual pain, a heavy fist to the chest, dropping Beacom down and a jumping stomp on the arm, Bartagus eyeing at his opponent now, we're going to finish this off with a big maneuver and here it is, more squats lift before the power slam, Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. Shoulders are down. Two count at three. And Partagus does it. Despite the interference, well, the so-called interference from Mr. Ace. There are the squats. Military press and drop. Just imagine the amount of mass this man was just lifting without any problem whatsoever. That's what makes Bartagus uh, a character in a completely different class. Here is your winner, Spectacular, the Olympian Strongman. Big Ham definitely needs to come up with another plan if he wants to get this uh, career turned around. But we gotta see, we gotta wait and see to find out how things will turn out for Partacus and how Mr. Age comes to these calculations. For now, enjoy your victory. The Olympia legend, you have earned it. Stepping inside the ring next we have Queen Raiden and Christina Van Mortis and they will be facing each other off in a submission match. And here comes Christina, wait a minute, cut to Yori Elizabeth. Elizabeth coming from behind attacking Christina before the match could even start. The referee call, calling him, her off and getting her out of the arena. Christina already taking a beating. Checking if she's able to fight, if she wants to fight. I would have... Well, looks like things are ready to go. Christina and Queen Raiden. One of the most prominent pair of brawlers we had on the second season. They, their fights definitely were one of the highlights of the second season, the early second season as they became legends on their own. And tonight th that legend is gonna be continuing on, even though Christina now is at a severe disadvantage, but doesn't look like that's stopping her one bit. Looks up the head scissors already, going, trying to get the submission victory. Queen tosses her off. Doesn't let her 
Oh, or, or maybe that's for good for the springboard. A springboard uh, Superman punch. Dropping Christina down. Sets up and goes for the kick against the back. Christina definitely needs to be, pace herself out carefully here, Ipsy. Even a one mistake could prove uh, fatal for her success. She needs to make sure, steady and sure work of her opponent tonight if she's hoping for a victory. Win with the interference there. Go for a strike and look at this military press and doing uh, presses all on top of her head. Really beautiful. Christina definitely still has a strength. Looks like, ooh, going for a bite against the arm. That's a bit, bit of a nasty maneuver. She's gonna go for it again. Eating up those fingers. That's a that's a bit of a dirty maneuver, but oh well. Here we have Queen with the dragon screw turning things around against Christina Van Morris. Lifted up and forearm smash straight to the head. Ultimately, Queen Raiden was the one to prove to be the superior one against Christina, and looks like she's gonna be doing just that again. No, Christina able to pick herself up from the triangle lock at the triangle choke and slams Queen back on the canvas. Able to create the separation she needed. Goes for the atomic drop. Catching hold of Queen now. And Queen now. No, she's able to free herself before any damage was done. And Christina, oh, Christina did not like that. She's riled up and ready to go. Again with the military press, this time countered by with a DDT. Win raid and turning things around against Christina Van Morris. Sets up and goes for the arm bar. The arm bar has been locked in and Christina now, the referee making sure she's alright. She is able to face off, to get the hold off, get, get Queen off her. But she really needs to kick up her offensive abilities right here and now. Sent into the corner now. Queen in a poor position. Trapped really as he goes for the stomps. Dropped on the bottom. Turned up back with more stomps. And looks like no. She's going to go for more biting. No. Queen able to fight her off. But still. At this rate. It's going to be wonder if there's going to be any circulation left. In the left arm of Queen Raiden. Queen charging up her fist now. Looking to. Get a devastating blow here. Christina dodges it expertly. Another military press into a drop. Looks like Christina eyeing up her queen. Trying to end this right here and now sets up with the tombstone power driver. There it is. The end has come and now here's the final blow. The head scissors are locked in. Christina just needs to finish this off with the head scissors and it's all over. Can she do it though? Does it look like, yeah, Queen in no no trouble at all, able to force that, that off. Go, go for a kick now, though, gets countered. Queen Raiden catching her from behind. No arm wrenching. An arm wrench takedown. Retaliation by Christina. Christina meeting both of the knees there for her. Trouble lifted back up, going for a kick, a natural kick. And Christina now jumping it and goes for the midnight snacking. More bites to the neck there. Queen trying to fight her off. She's able to fight her off, but still. Christina already got what she wanted. In a good position now, going for the stomp against the leg there. Another one incoming. Is she gonna go for a third one or what? Catching hold of both of the legs. Is she gonna go for a London? Not the London, I mean, but the Boston trap. But instead, no, the King of we Swings. The giant swing. Quinn now locks up the arm with a hammer lock. And brought down with the spine buster. Lifting Christina back up to her feet again. Gets a hold of her and now being set into the corner. Let's see. There she goes. Slammed really there. Lift that up onto the top turnbuckle and what is... Look at this, the twist of fate. Queen Raiden with the twist of fate. And not done yet, she's locking up the 
triangle choke hold, trying to get the submissive victory. She could do it. She's squeezing and pulling on the arm as hard as she can. Christina, come on, you have to tap out. This is not worth it. No, she lets her go. Really looked like Christina slipped off from that. Did she, did she lose control or what, what was the deal here? Quinn now getting back into the corner, charging up her fist one more time. Here she comes, and here's no, she misses again. Christina with the atomic drop again, turning things around against Quinn. Quinn Raiden lifted up, and looks like another tombstone pile driver incoming. There it is. Good night, it is over. This fight is over. The leg scissors, the head scissors locked in, and you can see. Christina is not sparing anything this time. Quinn Raiden tapping out of this competition. Meaning the winner by the default by a submission is Christina Van Mortis. A really impressive victory considering she had to fight, fight this really in a handicap position. Getting slammed into the steel steps at the start of the match is not good. It definitely is going to leave you hurting. Especially when you're unprepared for that kind of a thing. Really underhanded tactic from the professional martial arts champion. No doubt about it, Christina will be looking for a bit of payback on the upcoming Tables, Ladders and Chairs event. The Brawl Masters Day 1 special. One way or another, this rivalry will get finished soon. And Christina definitely plans on coming out of this one on the top. With that, it's time for the eighth match of the night. We have another submission match coming up, this time with Caitlin O'Neill and Alexia Dregadotir. A really few eventful weeks between Caitlin O'Neill and Alexia Ricardo Terras. Caitlin is still eyeing for her position back at the uh, All Star Division. As we are, so far, Caitlin has been most successful in proving herself to be the one deserving the spot. But she is still not clear. Tonight, she'll have to prove herself yet again. Alexia Dregadotir, a little mighty miss with un uh, contemporary has uh, contemporary unbelievable power. How she has that much power in her body, it's a mystery. Apparently when she was young, she was fed with some kind of a magic plant, a magic bean of swords, and that allowed her to get a monstrous amount of strength. Apparently her father was a pirate and he, he was the one to give her that magic bean. As ever since Alexia Dregadotir has made good use of her strength. Most recently against her career in the Brawl Masters. Which has definitely surprised uh, not only me but many of the other brawlers. But Katie O'Neill definitely remaining unshaken and still 
adamant that she is the one deserving Alexia spot in the spotlight in the All-Star Division, the Gold League. Going for a stomps now. Caitlyn definitely tried to keep Alexia down and now that's after all. We've never really seen either of these women play out in a submission match, so it's going to be really interesting to see how they're going to be performing and what kind of tactics they'll be using. After all, a submission match so great, greatly differs from a regular match where a pinfall is a loud way to eliminate your opponent. And here we go, Alexia with the chicken wing submission hold. Caitlyn immediately able to pick it up. A kick to the back of the head to remind Alexia not to try that again. Alexia countering and now going for a strike. Another one going off with the jab and a clothesline. A ripcord clothesline really. Caitlyn retaliating with a clothesline of her own. Gets countered again. Turning things around. Alexia trying to keep the momentum up. Hooks her up and sets up with the power bomb. No. Very beautiful touch there from over her body, over her head. A suplex, very solid technique. Dropping Caitlyn down, who's definitely eating up a good amount of damage so far. Alexia on the top rope now. And here she comes, diving down with the elbow. Misses though. Getting slapped. That, that was nasty. Uh, that, uh, and insulting. Alexia with her kick, countering. Caitlyn one more time, Caitlyn turning things around, lift up for the suplex, suplex has landed and Caitlyn now going for a stomp, but looks like she's gonna try one more, she's gonna try a submission of the colossal clutch, uh, or rather, yeah, a uh, clutch hold being applied here, Alexia launching her off, that, that took a bit of a long for Alexia, well a little while for Alexia to for, force her way out of that, but She's still in this. She's still in this and ready to win. She only has to make a few successful maneuvers. But here's Caitlyn with the backbreaker. It could be the spelling of the doom as he goes for the one Irish curse, the second Irish curse, and the trifecta, the complete trifecta of Irish curses. That it, that's the move that eliminated Alexia out of this competition previously. Last time these two were fighting, Alexia this time fully prepared and fully still energized. Jawbreaker recovery and now lifting Caitlyn up to the top turnbuckle. No, she is able to escape from there on her own. And now a hair rip toss. Alexia is down. She's being lifted back up to her feet. And looks like Caitlyn setting up with the Ireland call. Alexia is down as he ate up a good amount of damage. A single like camel clutch is here. This could be the end. Alexia, you must hold on or you must tap out. But whatever you do, do not end up breaking your body. Caitlin lets her go. Pretty sure she could sense as Alexia is not about to give up just yet. She needs to cause some more damage here. A beautiful DDD recovery there by Alexia turning things around. Stomp on the arm there to turn Caitlyn around and after a chicken wing a submission hold locked in and breaching Caitlyn once again rolling around elbow to the face forces the separation there Caitlyn back up and so is Alexia Alexia hitting her guard nothing maneuver here able to escape Alexia has hold goes for the inverted DDT Caitlyn getting countered now, getting struck down, lifted up and brought down. Very beautiful slam there. Lifted up and a waist lock into a power slam. Stomp on the arm and another one incoming looks like there it is. Misses with the stomp door but a running clothesline. And another one she's not done yet. Caitlyn trying to get back up to her feet. Meeting the third clothesline along the way. Set up and stomp right on the arm. And another stomp. And this could do it one more time with the chicken wing. Submission hold. Let's see if this time he will do the trick or... Caitlyn definitely trying to muster up any strength for resistance. There she goes, able to roll off. And force the separation. 
So far, Alexia has been turning things around very nicely. A waist lock into a power bomb. Alexia on the top rope. And here she dives with the elbow first, straight onto the chest, really driving the elbow into the chest. Punching straight to the face. Catches hold of the head, no, goes for more punches instead. Would have figured some kind of a hold, but no, instead going for more softening blows. Caitlin misses, goes for the slap though. Alternating strikes after one and after lifted up into a fireman's carry. And another Ireland's call. Stomp on the arm and surely this is it. The single leg camel clutch one more time. The neck, the head, the back. Everything is being torqued here. Taps out Alexia Regadotir once again. Tapping out, submitting to Caitlin. And meeting Caitlin O'Neill once again proving herself to be a step ahead at the crater brawler. Looks like Alexia not at all satisfied with this outcome and I cannot blame her. Yeah, there's some harsh words being exchanged, but that's not stopping Caitlin. Caitlin just enjoying a victory here. With that, I believe we are looking at the newest member of the Grand Prix series, the, the All-Star series. Uh, we want there isn't any official word as of yet, but we will get back on that as soon as possible. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event of tonight. It'll be Furious Ford versus Outlaw KC, and the winner of this match will be given the Evolution match coming up this Sunday for the opportunity to raise themselves to the Grand Prix series. been trying out a new sport apparently he has been in addition to brawling he has been taking interest in motorcycles and well it's being winter so he has to put the motorcycles on hold and instead he's focusing on motor sledding right now but he had a really enjoyable pastime and he's not fighting out nonetheless furious ford in a very good position tonight this is a break or make moment for him so he has to put out all his focus in this fight alone. And then he can go back to sledding. Original Outlaw and the original Heartbreaker of the series, it's Outlaw Casey, a real desperado. He has made a real successful impact right here in the third season, and he has definitely earned his position in the spotlight. But now it all comes to sealing the deal here. But knowing Casey, he will definitely find a way to pull through.
This could be a career-defining moment for any either of these men. We have Furious Ford and Outlaw Casey inside the ring right now. And the winner of this match will be given an evolution match coming up this Sunday in the t Tables, Ladders and Chairs premium show on the Brawl Masters. Either one of these men could become the next uh, All-Star Brawler. It all comes down to whether or not they can who wins this match and whether or not they'll be able to uh, get a win on Sunday as well. Of course, with uh, someone's success comes someone's loss. So we, we'll just have to see who, whose spot they'll be going after. With for strikes now, Casey starting off nice and heavy, winding up punts with the uppercut. Dropping Furious Ford down. Ford able to retaliate with a kick there. Stomp on the arm there. Setting up looks like. With the bow and arrow hold. There it is. Looking in the submission and trying to get Casey out of this competition as soon as possible. Casey able to pick it up though. Go, trying to go for the cover but Ford immediately tosses him off. Going for a strike against the torso there. A kick to the torso. Another one. Really trying to soften that mid body area. A fall away slam there by Ford and now dropping the knee straight to the back. Looks like Ford is serious, full, full on serious tonight. Already starting up a big maneuver here from the corner. A knee lift not done yet. Fireman's carry. And here comes Casey with the elbows to the face. He's able to fight the hold off. Did meet a horrible, horrible end. Goes for the backbreaker himself though. If they forward uh, back up and there it is, locks up. Here comes the one night stand with Outlaw Casey. Many a brawler have fallen to that one, but he's not done yet. Kick to the torso and the moonlight drive as well. And Furious Ford got immediately knocked out by that. The winner by a knockout and hence the one to be given the evolution match on Sunday is Outlaw Casey. Well, Casey definitely, didn't definitely come here for any nonsense. He came, he saw, he conquered. I did not believe a such a fast knockout would be possible. But here we have Casey proving us all wrong. With that, uh, tonight's episode of the Pro Master comes to an end. Remember on two, uh, Tuesday. Remember on Sunday. The Pro Masters Day 1 Special Show, Tables, Ladders and Chairs, Championship Fights, Evolution Fights, Rivalry Fights, you get all of it and we'll be starting the New Year's with a bang as such. I hope to see you then and there. Until then, I have been your host, Kupari Parta, and this has been Pro Masters.